Hey guys, welcome back to the Unbound Classic channel. Today we are at the Northern Utah Mustang Ass Owners Association Spring Fling Car Show. There we go, whole thing. <laughs> Let's check this out. It's true. It's just never done. Never, ever, never, ever, ever fully, done. Fully done. <laughs> There's always something you can improve. What's uh, what's going on with the cutout here? <laughs> it's like it looks like it's supposed to feed something back there, but I don't. Feeds. You can see. Look in here. Oh, okay, so that comes up to the. Okay, that's your cold air intake. Cold air intake. Yeah. Nice. Right, right out the front. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I like the look ah. of that front edge spoiler, so I just integrated it into it. That's smart. Good so work, man. It's actually pretty invisible if I wipe the dust off and yeah. armor all everything. Yeah. It, most people will miss it. They won't even notice. It's That's like the awesome. lasers bottle behind the passenger seat. A lot of people miss that. Oh, yeah. I don't they think I spotted that. It. Well, it's just a simple 89 Mustang LX 5.0. 89. Yeah. With a little stroker engine. I was going to say. 331. No longer 5.0. Yeah. yeah. A little, <laughs> little bigger, not much, because it's a heavier convertible. We put CPO 600 in it. Nice. And, uh, Which is still five speed, right? Yes, it's still five speed. Yeah. You have to row the gears. Yeah. And uh, 410 rear end gear. Uh, does pretty good at the track up here at 1130s at 121 to 124 miles an hour. Nice. And, still, and we're at what? Four uh, or 5,000 feet, you know, whatever uh, it is. 4,400 feet elevation. Yeah, yeah, 1130s at 121 to 124. Nice. Not bad. Yeah. And uh, still, oh, there's the nitrogen. A driver. I've driven it to San Diego and back. All on matching trailer that I didn't bring with me today. Oh, yeah, you didn't. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, it's usually back there, but it's painted to match. Yeah, painted to match the car. I got over 22 miles per gallon round trip, and uh, so it's a good, du they're good dual purpose cars, they really are, think about it. So do you have, you have a radio, but you don't have an antenna, how well does it pick up? Oh, well, I just play CDs or run music oh, okay. off the Bluetooth, I don't bother with local radio stations and stuff. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah. Oh wow, you got your MSD in here. Huh. Yeah, and in the glove box area is well hidden, but that's a timing controller. Oh yeah. And I can dial the timing back as much as 10 degrees just by really? turning the dial at will. Like if I'm gonna run nitrous, I dial it back four degrees. Yeah. All I do is pop open the glove box, dial it back four degrees, pop the box back up and she's ready to go. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so Anthony's got a pretty sweet setup here. He's also part of the uh, the Fox Body Addicts group here in Utah. We got a couple more. Let's see, we got Frankie. Got my 86 and another convertible here. that went from Ford to Vegas. Ford to Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this is Bird Shelby GT, up. not a Shelby GT500. Oh, Shelby yeah. Shelby GT500s went from Ford to a dealer. Oh, yeah. They went directly from Ford to Vegas and had them Shelbyized. Oh, that's cool. And they only made them two years. Really? 07 and 08. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's really interesting. That's something they made in 07. A friend of mine got one of these brand new. Yeah. Oh, cool. And uh, 
half, less than half in 08. Yeah. And my Shelby number is number 1402 out of the 2171. Wow. But the configuration, they all made 197. And they only made the blue in 2008. Yeah, only blue in 2008. And convertible, that's cool. Wow. If the guys that bought the 500 wanted Shelby to touch them, yeah. they'd have to take them down on their own dime and have them super snaked. Huh. Then they get a Shelby number. Yeah. They get restriped and says Shelby GT500 Super Snake, and then they get a medallion right there that says Super Snake. Yeah. Then you know that they've taken them down on their own dime and had Shelby upgraded. Oh, that's cool. The 500 guys lately they can they can order a dash plaque. Yeah. But they only print the VIN number on it. Oh. It's not a Shelby number. Shelby uh -huh. can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's really interesting. AC Cobra hood scoop, but they're not allowed on the 500s. Yeah. That's got a plate, but it's the VIN number. It's not a Shelby number, that's his VIN number. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, interesting. So he hasn't taken it down at an upgrade. Yeah. Oh, but that's interesting. Know. Yeah, that's cool. So what else did they do to the cars? Oh, when they get it Super Snake, they uh, get it upgraded most of the motor. They'll yeah. give them an extra 150 horsepower and then a lot of some other goodies and stuff like that. Yeah. But they got to pay for it, you know, yeah. an extra 45, 55. On these ones though, like what did they do on these? these can't, oh, suspension basically. Yeah. This is a track car. Oh, okay. Cool. It was, Shelby wanted to be more similar to his original GT350 track car that's 65 yeah so this that's what he wanted to and then the hood scoop is similar to the uh old ac cobra that's true it's yeah not functional, but it's reminiscent yeah so this has got a track suspension so we can we can turn off the dime yeah we'll out uh, we'll out uh, corner a 500 but they'll catch us on straight away yeah because they've got the bike too definitely <laughs>
like for instance, the, uh, the brake light switch is, is on the master cylinder on the 64. It's a hydraulic switch. Huh. 65, they put a mechanical one on the brake pedal. That was, you know, just one of many things that they changed. So they kind of, they got it all set up and then they're like, I think this will work better. And you know, yeah. as they went along, they just kind of changed things up. That's cool. It's pretty much all original. Wow. Uh, way four point building. Leave it there. That's the way I like it. Yeah. Wow. And then, so that's the generator, huh? That's the generator right there. Wow, look at that. Huh, yeah, it says right there. Yeah, wow. It's pretty much all Ford, too. Yeah, it's got a Ford four barrel auto line carburetor on it. All the numbers pretty much match on the engine. Wow. Not that I show it that way, it's just because that's the way I want it. Yeah. Uh, now, is it a 260? It has the 289. It's, it's a 289. It is a 289. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a four barrel carburetor. That's cool. Now, did they have a 260 at first, or did they yes, always they have did. it? They did, okay. They, they had both in 64. Okay. So, so that was another just, one of those just, items. It's huh? just that in 65, when the 65 started, they pretty well dropped all the engines. Huh. That they had a 176 cylinder, well they bumped it up to a 265. They dropped the 260. They yeah. went they went to a 289 two barrel. They had a uh, they had a 289 four barrel low compression. That's a deco. That's what this is. Yeah. And they dropped. They dropped that. Went to a 289 four barrel high compression. The only, the only engine they actually kept was the K code, which is a you know high performance. Yeah. Yeah. 289 hypo or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's cool. And 325 gears. <laughs> cool. But anyway. This is pretty much all, all the info I got from the uh, data plate on the door. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Thanks for sharing. Justin has shown up. He was at another kind of meetup. Justin! Oh. What's up, man? How's it going? Good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, 1990s? 1990s. 1990. Yeah. 351 twin turbo. What was your numbers at the dyno? Uh, 620 horsepower, 730 torque. Nice. So, yeah, Justin's had quite an adventure. Uh, when was your unfortunate on ramp? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Uh, two or three years ago. Was that that long? Wow. Yeah. So yeah, he had a little trouble on on, on ramp and and uh, took out the front end more or less of the car here, kind of bent sideways. But uh, he tore that off, welded on its. Uh, it's tubular front end and went right back at it. So now he's got his 351 twin turbo. He's uh, another one that's in the uh, Utah Fox by the Alex. So pretty sweet. Then we got another guy showing up. Who's this? It's Justin. Another Justin? Yeah, another Justin. <laughs> yeah, Justin's uh, 
been really cruising on stuff. So he's got a Terminator X, I believe, including that full digital dash there. And uh, this thing pulls for sure. All right, we got Shane and a little close up here, the 8-9 Garage. So check out his channel. Um, please, please what do. we got here today, Shane? Well, this is uh, Frankie, my 88 GT. Um, I picked this up. Frank and in, Fox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I picked it up in June of 2020. It was basically a roller. It had, uh, had the bottom end of the motor in it. The top end was gone. So... I went to the wrecking yard, pulled the top end off an Explorer. So I got GT 40P heads, GT, and the Ford Explorer intake. Um, I have E30, an E303 cam in it. I did the Trick Flow spring upgrade. Um, it's got a 9495H pipe on it. It has right. Flow Monster mufflers. And I don't know, it's, it's been a, a lot of work. Yeah. But <laughs> so how was putting the. Uh, how are those P-heads with like your headers and all that? Um, Does that work pretty well? Actually, I, I have just knock off eBay headers. Yeah. I paid like 88 bucks for them on, or actually I bought them on Amazon, not eBay. Nice. And uh, I have factory Explorer plugs on it and I have uh, plug wires that are from a 1989 uh, Chevy Blazer. 305 huh. so it has a 90 degree boot on both sides and that that actually helps them clear i mean that's cool i heard it yeah I, I think i was talking to someone before and and uh because i was looking at those for a while and uh and people were saying to get the the chevy wires yeah so. yeah the only thing that you don't get is you don't get the, the coil wire so you have to buy a coil yeah. wire separate but chevy wires work fine on it so and, in a five and, lug swap. Oh, nice. So it's got. This is uh, pretty. Just you know. You got you always pause for sixty nine or seventy. Yeah. Take take a take a moment. Yeah. Take yeah. that in. Um, hey, Rustang. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's his uh, Instagram. Oh, is that, is that who that is? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Five lug swap. It has. I miscalculated on my tire size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so it has uh, Mark 7 rotors, SVO calipers, and Ranger drums and axes. Nice. That's sweet. It tears out of a 92 GT. So until everyone knows, this isn't the uh, the title car of the 89 Garage. That one, he went, <laughs> Shade was working like crazy all this last week and then uh, found some leaks. So that one didn't uh, come along today, unfortunately. Put new valve covers on it for a CARP 302 and they're leaking basically. Yeah. So, and I didn't want to drive it 35 miles with how bad it was leaking. So yeah, leaking pretty I'll probably bad. start working on it when I get home. Yeah, but I'm sure you can check that out. He'll have lots of videos, I'm sure, about all of that coming up on his channel if you want to see it. Uh, winners for the Starship. So this is the uh, inside the dealership that kind of sponsored the car show. They've got another Ford GT hanging out in here. There was the red and white one out in the show. And this is Steve supercharged sailing Cobra, which is pretty slick. Yeah, that's pretty sharp. I like what they did those years. Uh, probably some of the best looking new edges. All right, guys, spotted it. Since we we're by the dealership, I had to stop by and see this. <laughs> Mustang Mach-E X, I guess? E4X? I don't know. <laughs> But there it is. And it's got a Mustang badge on the back. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? So, Mustang Mach E, from what I understand, is actually a really solid like SUV and 
and uh, EV SUV, but it seems like Ford, they didn't want it to just be another SUV out there. So they're like, let's put Mustang's name on it. Cause that won't tick people off. <laughs> Apparently they're really nice from from all of the like actual experience. People that have used them are pretty solid. But and there's some really you know performance wise, I've seen some really cool ones too. But uh, what do you guys think? I'd like to hear your your thoughts on this thing. <laughs> it's weird. It's hard calling it a Mustang. Um, but it is what it is. What do you think, guys? Let me know. 1,200 horsepower. Monster. stragglers left honestly it's mostly our uh, fox body crew hanging out a bunch of the guys um, talked to a lot of really cool people and learned a lot about the cars a lot of cool stories there's so many details that you just don't know about don't think about um things people have done to their cars things ford did to them you know from year to year uh it's pretty cool what you can learn when you just kind of get out and chat with people thanks for joining guys see you next time